Hey guys, what's up? It's Crew Dog Gamer bringing you another Fishing Planet video. Uh, this time at a request. First time I've actually had a request for how to catch something, and uh, we're going to be looking at fishing for alligator gar in Missouri. And it's actually a really fun fish to catch. They're always big. They're always really big, and uh, they're they're worth a decent bit. Um, let's see if I can actually find my biggest. Uh, Alligator gar. My biggest alligator gar right now is a 42 pounder, uh, and I caught it on Shiners. Uh, this was April 14th. It's a 58 inch fish. They're they're absolutely huge. So it's not my biggest fish, but it's pretty damn close. And today I'm going to be showing you guys how to catch them uh, right over here at the Pike Challenge. Yeah, that's not typical. Uh, pike Challenge is where you're going to be catching them at. And I'll try and explain it to you from this standpoint so you can see a little bit better. What you'll see is you have these two logs, one here and uh, one laying down right here. That one laying down is the one you're going to want to be looking for in this, uh, in this situation. And I'll show you my setup that I'm using for this. Uh, you're going to be using a bobber setup. Get you a heavy bobber, heavy rod, and a heavy line and reel. Pretty much the heaviest shit you can get. Um, and actually I have the wrong hook on there. I like to use a seven on for this. So we'll be using a Brutus 1110, it's a little bit longer, so it gives you a little bit more leverage with the fish. These things really fight really hard. Um, they're actually the hardest fish in the game to land right now that I can think of. Uh, we're using an Espera Double Punch 6500, a 30 pound braid, a pear shaped extra heavy float, seven on hook, and shiners. Uh, shiners are the most consistent bait I can find but large minnows will also catch them for you and small minnows can also catch them so if we go down here to our random room over at the mudwater river 5 a.m not the time to catch them uh, believe it or not you're going to want to go all the way up to 6 p.m uh, you can start at 5 and hope for one in five every now and then i'll catch one in there but really 6 p.m is where it really kicks off you can see that big ass shiner on the end of the line so we're going to bring our line leader all the way down, golly this thing's sensitive, to 24 inches. 24 or 25, it doesn't really matter. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and bump my drag up. Shit, I might want to go ahead and put some more line on because these things will wear your equipment down very quickly. Uh, in no time they will wear it down. And when you put new line on your rod, you see I'm putting 699 yards on there, or feet. 690 feet is what you need if uh, if you don't have the right equipment. They'll pull me out. I've had one pull me out over 200 feet before. Uh, not That's 200 feet from where it started. So I think you'll start around 110 and it'll pull you that much out. It pulled me all the way out to almost 350. So where you're gonna wanna be fishing, you got your shiners, you got your seven knot hook, your heavy rod and reel, leader set at 24 inches. There's that standing up log we were talking about right there, okay? You're gonna wanna come over to the laying down log and you're just gonna wanna put it right in front of it. Adjust your drag accordingly. If you have a pretty low tension line, it's the best you can get. Obviously don't have your drag too high and hopefully we'll have a fish here pretty soon. So it has not even been a minute and we're already getting a bite. Uh, it, it goes pretty quick whenever they decide to bite. So let's wait and see if this sucker will go with it. So we've only had a minute elapse and we've had the fish bite twice. Uh, these fish, they're really not scared to bite. They will go for that bait very quickly, but uh, sometimes it will take you a minute to get them to actually run off with it to where you can set the hook. He's back at it again. He's really putting tension on it now. Oh! Damn. Okay, so we missed that fish. We'll see if we can't get another one. Uh, I don't think it'll be too hard to get another one to go for it. So that's one missed fish. Uh, I got a little overzealous. He pulled it down. It might not have been a big a, uh, a a big enough one. So we'll give that another shot. See if we can get you know something over forty pounds to take it from us. Now one thing uh, that I will note: I have fought a fish on here for uh, actually the first really big gar you know I, I think he was over 50 pounds but the, the first really big gar I hooked into he actually ended up taking my line all the way over uh, 
where my in-game guy's right shoulder would be and running around the turn of the river and uh, he pulled every single foot of line I had out. Uh, I, ha I had about 320 feet I want to say in my reel at the time and he, he took every bit of it and he broke my rod. Not my line, he broke my rod. Because I had the 30 pound line on here but the rod can only take like 15 at the most. So we'll wait, we'll see if we get another fish here in just a second, and uh, I'll have you guys here along with me for the ride. Uh, I'm reeling in now, uh, nothing on that cast. I'll usually let it drift right over into uh, where it's almost to the dark area of these bushes that my rod tip is on right now. And if I don't get anything by that time, I pretty much know it's time to hang it up and I'll, uh, I'll give it another cast. Oh, looks like we're getting another bite here, guys. Let me put my phone up. Uh, it took us about eight minutes on that one to start getting a bite, um, which is actually longer than usual. I usually only have to spend maybe a minute or two in-game uh, waiting for another bite. So hopefully I don't fuck this one up and this this guy actually takes the bait and I don't have to sit here and explain to you why I missed two fish because that would just be downright fucking embarrassing. Not going to lie. But same setup as before, shiners right there on the flat log. And uh, we'll hope that this guy actually takes the bait. He's actually almost to my reeling point. But if I get a bite, I'm not reeling it in. There's no way. Um, and you can see, you'll cast somewhere between 115 and 120 feet, hopefully. Uh, you can catch them all the way down to 105, I have. So if you can't quite get your lure or your bait all the way out there, it's, uh, it's not that big of a deal. You should be okay. Hey, there you go. We got a fish on, guys. Now, one of the things I'll uh, I'll definitely tell you right now is your first reaction is going to be to start reeling, and I'll go ahead and tell you that that's probably not what you want to do. You see how I basically I'm just holding him here, um, and I'll hold him here until he decides he wants to quit fighting for a minute, and then when that tension drops, I'll start reeling him in. I don't think this guy is very big. Just make sure you don't end up losing the fish due to low tension because I've lost a couple of nice gar to that. And uh, fighting these gar is actually, I'm not going to lie, it's pretty goddamn hard. Uh, I, I still struggle with it. You can see how this, this fish is just pulling my line out like it's absolutely nothing. And I've got my drag turned almost all the way up. This, uh, this reel has a 29-pound a max drag. So <laughs> that'll let you know how big the fish is most of the time. If I can reel them straight in, I usually know it's a, a smaller fish uh, before I even get them to the land. But what I'll have to do is uh, kind of just hold him there until I feel like he's not fighting as much. And uh, it's not really like the old way you'd see people fighting was like this. That way it doesn't seem to work as well anymore. I usually get them in quicker just by pulling back and uh, reeling. And it doesn't work as well in the first part of the fight, but once the fish tires out a little bit, yeah, and there's the uh, the jumping gar glitch. You see that shit? That, that, that's actually one of the funniest things about catching gar is they'll come flying out of the water 15 or 20 feet. Here we go. Now we're pulling them in a little bit. You just got to watch that tension. Make sure you always have line tension on them because you'll lose them quick due to that low tension. This guy's coming right in, so he might be uh, smaller than I think he is. But he is a gar, that's for damn sure. I'd like to get looking straight so I can kind of see him a little bit. Let's turn this way. Yeah, we'll be able to get him in pretty soon. He's probably about, I want to say he's around 23, 25 pounds maybe, because the weight of the fish doesn't necessarily determine how your drag is going to come out. These fish are insane. I'm not kidding. They are methed up on something. They are hard as shit to catch. They are hard to bring in. That's for damn sure. And you can kind of see the way I'm fighting. I'm just kind of pulling. And whenever uh, I pull back a good bit, I'll try and get a reel on them. It works better sometimes. But when it does work, it works really well. Hopefully I'll be able to tire them out and show you guys a little bit better. Alright, so here you can actually see I'm kind of getting them to fight like I want to. Um, I've tired them out enough to where I can pull them back a little bit, get a few feet on them, pull them back a little bit like this, and get a few more feet on them. I've uh, brought them down a good bit. It's been about a 
30 minute in game fight so far so he's probably a halfway decent fish um, or he's just got a lot more gust on him than I thought he did but you can see I'm trying to keep that uh, that real tension the real tension is what you uh, you really want to pay attention to when you're trying to fight these big fish because the less times you hear that that click from your drag the more you're bringing that fish in so just kind of pull back get them far enough back get your couple of rod turns and it, it's a it's definitely a process and it takes a little while but you always get the fish this way and uh this is how i reel in pretty much every gar I, I catch not and also blue cats and stripers and other stuff i'll catch um this is kind of my go-to method and still the gar is the hardest one to catch uh you know like a 50 pound blue cat is just as hard to catch as a uh a 30 pound gar they just fight so hard i don't know why and we should actually be getting this fish up here in just a second so you get to see a pretty nice fish Come here, little buddy. That's hilarious. All right, here we go. Here's an alligator gar. You see how big that son of a bitch is when he comes in. So that is a 41 pound, 57 inch alligator gar. Almost my biggest one. Uh, he's pretty good size. That's uh, that's an alligator gar for sure. So, uh, guys, I hope you enjoyed my tutorial on how to catch alligator gar. If you have any questions on it, please feel free to ask me. I'll be more than happy to help you out. Uh, and that, uh, there's not a whole lot to it. You just got to have time invested in it. As you see, it almost took me an hour to get a 40 pound fish. So it might not be as productive as, as you want it to be, but you also have to remember you'll catch 18 and 15 pound ones and, uh, you know, you'll, you'll catch them like this. And sometimes it'll be fast and, you know, a 30 pounder will be easy to bring in. Sometimes you'll spend almost an hour fighting a 40 pounder. That's just the way the gars are. Um, so, like I said, if you have any questions, please ask me. I'll be more than happy to answer them for you. I'm Crew Dog Gamer. You guys have a great day. This has been my alligator guard tutorial. Later, guys.